Finally decided to get up, did we? What? It's Sunday, isn't it? No, I was only kidding, George. Oh, ha-ha. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. You want a bacon sandwich? Yes, please. Oh, go on, sit yourself down, lad. Where's Nana? Oh, she stayed chatting at the church. Tom and Natasha brought their twins with them. They seemed particularly happy. Tom and Natasha, I mean. Did they? Mm. Which is sort of impressive with everything they've got going on. Running their own business and raising two small babies. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is. Oh, are you still tired? I am absolutely knackered. Well, it was a tough shift yesterday. It was so hot and there was so much to do. Yeah, but you did it. You got stuck in and you didn't complain. You're a hard worker, George. I'm impressed. I hope you know that. I don't really know that, no. I mean, I can't lie, Grandad. George! You've given me two verbal warnings since I started the job. Yeah, but you've taken that on. And you've been as good as gold since then. Where is everyone? Hmm. Chelsea stayed at Keisha's last night. She's always at Keisha's. Well, where's Jazza, then? Round at Jim's, making a shopping list. A shopping list? You're supposed to be going to the cash and carry with them, remember? Yeah, but not this early. It's nearly 11, Brad. Actually, it's only half ten. And it's a Sunday. Well, I think Jazza has got big plans for decorating the ball and Jim's an early bird, so you better get some breakfast in you and get round there. OK. You don't mind, do you, helping Jazza? Only I think he's panicking that he's only got four days to get everything sorted before the big day and what with his ankle being busted, he needs all the help he can get. No, of course not. Apparently he's going to transform the room upstairs at the Bull into some sort of Scottish paradise. Scottish paradise? I think that's what he said. Is that all right with you? Oh, I don't care. Oh, no, that came out wrong. I'm just really happy that I'm getting married. <laughs> and I never had any dreams of, you know, big dresses and veils and cakes in tears. I just... It's not me. And Jazza's completely psyched about this Scottish theme, so, you know, that's fine by me. So, are we just buying the stuff today? I think so, yeah. Oh, and Ed's going to go with you and all. Um, what's happening with Grandad next week? Grandad? Yeah, like, is he going to be OK here without you when you're on your honeymoon? Oh, he's going to be at Susan's. Is he? I told you. I said ages ago. Wouldn't expect you to look after him, would I? Well, I was just checking. And Chelsea will be at Keisha's. Will she? Have you forgotten our whole conversation? Er, uh, no, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe. So you'll all be fine. Shouldn't need to worry about any of you while we're away. Um, Mum. What? There is one thing I'm a bit worried about, but... Oh, it sounds stupid. What is it? Well, you know you gave us that money from her dad? Yeah. I'm just not sure that I've gone and bought the right thing. Oh, don't worry. I don't mind what you wear. What did you buy? It's a bit more left field, to be honest. Left field? Eccentric. Right. It was Chelsea said I had to get it. She found it in a charity shop. She was all like, oh, you've got to get this, you've got to get this. But now I'm thinking I shouldn't have listened. Now I'm thinking I'm going to look a right wally. Well, are you going to tell me what it is? Don't laugh. OK. It's a green velvet suit. Wow. I shouldn't have bought it. I shouldn't have bought it. Can I see it? No. Well, then how am I supposed to advise you? I don't know. Why don't you go and try it on? Uh, Brad, please. I'm supposed to be rushing round to Jem's house. They can wait five minutes. I really want to see it, please. Please? OK. How's the sandwich? Mm, excellent. Perfection. Oh, well, that's not a bad review. <laughs> Do you really think I'm doing all right now? Uh, uh, Barrow, I mean. Yeah. Because Hannah's still not happy with me. Did she say that? No. But yesterday, I mean, I, I really worked my guts out. But she didn't say anything, like, positive or nice or anything. Well, Hannah's, um, 
Uh, Hannah's just a bit of a tough nut to crack, George. We used to get on at all, me and her. I know, yeah. But now, we're good. We make a grand team. Give it time, and I'm sure it'll be the same for you. <laughs> I don't think it will ever be like that. Uh, do you want me to have a word with her? No, 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 no way. I will if you want. I don't want you to, Grandad. Honestly, it, it's fine. Uh, well, listen, your Nana did ask me to have a word with you, actually. Oh, no. What? Oh, it's nothing bad. It's nothing bad. But, um, well, she's a bit concerned about you and... Brad. Yes. Yeah. Oh, she just won't stop going on about it, Grandad. Well, she wants it fixed, George, before the wedding. Well, some things can be fixed. Oh, don't say that. Can't you try and be the bigger man here? You've shown a lot of maturity lately. Have I? Yeah, all the plans you've got for your life. The work you're doing for Oliver, the charity fundraising at the fete, the way you're getting stuck in at Barrow, and it'd mean such a lot to your Nana and me if you two boys could sort things out. Oh, I'm really not sure about this. Just come into the kitchen. <sighs> okay. Okay. Oh, Brad. What? I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Is it that bad? You look amazing. Really? I mean, honestly, every girl on the planet will fall in love with you in that suit. Every girl on the planet? Yes. Mum... I can't even get one girl on the entire planet to show me the slightest bit of interest. That's not true. It's totally true. You've just got to get out there in that suit. <laughs> what? What's funny about that? Well, as if I'm going to walk about like this and felt push them. And anyway, last time I got out there, I got arrested. Well, that weren't your fault. It was. I mean, it was George's fault too, but mm. it was my fault and all. And the last time I asked a girl out, she basically ghosted me, so... Forgive me if I'd rather hang around the house. Brad, sweetheart, that was one girl. One date. There's plenty more fish in the sea, but you do have to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I know it's pathetic, and... And I'm not sure I could say this to anyone else, Mum, but... I really feel like I'm never going to meet anyone who I genuinely like, who genuinely likes me back. Of course you are. But, but some people don't. Some people spend their whole lives on their own. That's just the way it is for them. And I'm starting to think that I'm one of those people. And I know it sounds tragic and I'm embarrassed saying it. And please don't ever, ever repeat this to anyone else. As if I would. But maybe it's okay if I never have a proper, like, love of my life. <laughs> Brad, you are 17 years old. You have all the time in the world to meet somebody. Look at me. I'm getting married at 47, nearly 48. I've had my heart broken many times. I've been on my own with two kids. I had no reason to think I'd ever meet someone again, but I did. Yeah, but it was Jazzer. I mean, he's mad about you. <laughs> Maybe he is. But it weren't obvious to me or anyone else that things would work out for us. Like... No, I can't actually imagine you two not together now. You've got to have a bit more faith in people, Brad. And you've got to have a bit more faith in yourself. <laughs> You're such a catch. I am not. I know you hate me saying that, but it's true. Because you've got soul. And you're kind. And you're just a brilliant human being. I mean it. I know you do. I'm so proud of you. You know, your dad did not set you a good example. And yet, look at you. Look at how you've turned out. All right, you don't have to go on. <laughs> you will meet someone, Brad. But you have to leave the house. I mean, the love of your life is not going to ring on the doorbell, is she? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> uh, can you get it? I don't want to answer while I'm wearing this suit. <laughs> right. But you shouldn't be embarrassed, Brad. You look great. Oh, hi, Mia. Hi, Tracy. Um, Ed sent me instead of him because Stella asked him to work today. Last minute sort of thing. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh... He said Jim and Jazza and Brad needed help decorating or something. Oh, that's so nice of you, Mia. Yes, no problem. So, Jazza is round at Jim's right now and Brad was going to walk round there in a minute if you want to come in and wait. Oh, um, sure. You had breakfast? Yeah, thanks. Oh, hiya, Brad. Uh... 
Hi, Mia. A bit overdressed, aren't you, for this time of day? Oh, I was just... I'm going to go get change. Right, <clears throat> I've got to get round to Linda's for my interview. <laughs> interview? Yeah, she's calling it an interview, but it's not really that. She's just asking a few of us oldies about her memories of bygone village fates. Oh, right. She's writing a history of Ambridge village fates for some brochure she's hoping to have ready for the fate next month. Sounds fascinating. Well, yes, I think it could be, actually. <laughs> OK. But, uh, look, last thing I'll say about Brad, George. Um, you do know he's coming to stay here next week. What? Tracy and Jazz are going to be on their honeymoon for ten days, and Tracy doesn't want Brad and Bert on their own. Oh, uh, no, no, well, no. Well, Bert can't manage, can he? No, but Brad could. Well, uh, ten days is a long time on his own. Yeah, and it's a long time here and all. But maybe this is your chance, George. <sighs> Grandad. Will you just try for me? For me and your nana? OK, OK, I'll, I'll talk to him. I will. Ah, oh, thank you. But not today, because today is my day off. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You must be pleased about the charging station, Mia. Oh, yeah, I am. It's, it's brilliant. You've even won Jim round. <laughs> well, it wasn't me who won him round. I mean, most people at the meeting were really keen by the end. M most people except Susan. <laughs> Susan just didn't like change. <laughs> she wasn't that keen on me and Jazza getting married when we first told everyone. And I swear that was just about things changing too. OK, should we get going? Yeah. Mia, just tell us one thing. Yeah? Do you think Brad should wear the suit or do you think he should wear jeans and a hoodie? Um, well, it depends on the hoodie, I suppose. I haven't decided. I wouldn't wear that one with the stencil that's half peeled off. <laughs> no, obviously not that one. And I wouldn't wear the one with the blood stain. <laughs> the blood stain? <laughs> yeah, from when he got a nosebleed on the bus. We should go, should we? Yeah, probably. But Mia, don't you think you should wear the suit? Honestly? Say if you think it's awful. I think it's really great, Brad. I do. And you should definitely wear it. I do feel slightly guilty about taking time off work. Why? It's only a picnic, Helen. A girl's got to eat. Yeah, well, I could have just eaten a sandwich at my desk. <sighs> you don't have a desk. You make cheese. But sometimes I'm at a desk. Quite often I'm at a desk. <laughs> Sorry, I was being daft. I'm a bit giddy. Oh, well, you know. Mm, just a bit. And why's that? <sighs> Eric. Eric is to blame. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> We went away at the weekend. You went on a mini-break? No, no, it wasn't a mini-break. It sounds like a mini-break. Oh, the idea of one always makes me think of Bridget Jones. <laughs> me too. <laughs> the one where Hugh Grant falls in the lake. Yep. Anyway, he was working in Chichester for Eric, uh, not Hugh Grant. Yeah, got it. Yeah, sorry. And um, he was staying in this hotel that was really lovely, and he said maybe I should join him, so I did. But, I mean, he also had to work, so it didn't really qualify as a mini-break. Fair enough. But, um, he has asked me to go to Prague with him. Wow! Yeah, I know. And not because he's working there, just because he wants to go. Why Prague? Oh, he's never been there. Thought he'd been everywhere. Oh, so did I. You gonna go? I don't know. He should go. Why not? Uh, I'm worried it makes the whole thing a bit more serious. And, you know, this is meant to be a no-strings fling. <laughs> Makes it sound quite aeronautical. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, I said I'd think about it, but I'm not sure. Oh, I think you should go, Kirsty. Why not? It's a few days in Prague, not a marriage proposal. Maybe. And you do like him, don't you? I really like him. He's great. He's really good fun. He, he makes me laugh. And he's a really good kisser. Oh, now you're just making me jealous. Oh, sorry. <laughs> not that Lee's not a good kisser. He's really good. He's great. <laughs> I'm sure he is. Oh, Lord. How do we get into this? I think it's my fault. But you should definitely go to Prague. I said maybe. Was <laughs> oh, that your phone? Uh, yeah. Oh, message from Fallon. Everything okay? She really wants to chat about the tea room, but I just want one afternoon of not thinking about work. I've just spoken to Jolene and she's a bit concerned. What about? How much gear we've got with us. All right. Well, she doesn't want anything done to the room upstairs that can't easily be undone. No, of course no. 
Well, she specifically said that she doesn't want us knocking holes in the walls. Oh, how are we going to hang up all the portraits of Scottish heroes? I don't know, Jazza. I think we should just go for it. No tell MD and sort it out after. <laughs> Need to be any the wiser. But they'll hear us banging. No, they won't. It'll get busy in a bit. Customers will drown out any noise upstairs. I don't think it'll get that busy on a Monday lunchtime. Mm, maybe we'll do it later then if Julian goes out. Well, they're doing us quite a big favour, Jazza. We don't want to annoy them. No, I, I know, but I reckon we can make it work. And we've got to find a way to mount the stag's heat. We've just got to. Because, well, I paid a lot of money for this thing. Right. Did you ask Julian about a stepladder? Yes, Kenton's just fetching one from the cellar. Excellent. Uh, but you can't be going up a stepladder with your leg in plaster, Jazza. Mm, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can't. Mm. We don't really want any more accidents. What would Tracy say? Mm. She wouldn't be too chuffed. We could do with a bit more help, I feel. Oh, we've got Mia and Brad coming in a bit. Okie doke. Well, let's see what we can do. Uh, First things first, though, we've got to get you up the stairs. That's easy. I can just shuffle up on my backside. Right. Right you are. But you won't be able to do that on a stepladder, will you? So, how are things? Uh, things? Yeah, uh... You don't have to talk about it. No, um... Things are okay, actually. We haven't had any more scary letters from solicitors. Well, that's good. Yeah, and Lee's back at work, which is so much better for him, psychologically. It's a different bloke. I'm just really relieved that that's all done. Yeah, of course. So, I suppose I'm just hoping there won't be any more stuff. Yeah. But it's quite hard to believe that he would just give up, you know, just skulk off. Oh, I don't know, Kirsty. Maybe this is a reprieve rather than... Total surrender. But didn't Rob actually apologise to Lee? He did. Well, that's kind of amazing, isn't it? Or just really manipulative. Hmm. Oh, let's not talk about him. OK, sure, sorry. No, don't apologise. It's just enjoy our afternoon. Yeah. And you should text Eric. And say what? <laughs> that you'll go with him to Prague. Silly not to go if you want to. I think I do really want to. Well, then message him. OK, fine. Great. Oh, sorry. Answer it. If it's Fallon, I'm going to scream. She's left me three messages already since Friday. Really? She wants a meeting with us. I don't know why it's so urgent. Oh, God, it's the school. It's, it's Henry's school. <coughs> Hello? Hi, yes. What, what's happened? Right. Right. Oh, dear. OK, 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 yes, absolutely. No, no I can come right now. I can be with you in about 20 minutes. Ah, here come the cavalry. Hiya. How's it going? Well, it's a bit slow, to be honest. What with Jazza in plaster, I'm having to do all the stepladder work, and strictly between ourselves, it's not really my forte. And Jazza's not exactly helping with his constant critiques. <laughs> Where is he? I asked him to go and talk to Jolene about the bar arrangements for Thursday. I've made a lot more progress since he disappeared. So, what can we do to help? I, I could do with you and Brad hanging all these tartan streamers, sort of crisscrossing across the ceiling. Jazz is aiming for a sort of maypole effect. Uh, OK. We can try. And then I've got to work out how we're going to hang Kenny Dalgleish, Robert Burns and Charlene Spiteri. <laughs> what? Well, Jazz has got all these framed pictures of Scottish heroes, but I've tried to explain that we can't hammer nails in the walls. Yeah, doesn't sound like a great idea. Yeah, I agree. Good. Um, I'll tell him that it's three against one. Well, can you just take the pictures out of the frames and tape them onto the walls? Oh, that's a good idea. That'll work for the pictures, but uh, I fear it's not going to be strong enough for Jazza's stag's head. Stag's head? Uh, that's right. Though it's not a real stag's head, of course. Oh. Oh, good. Look, why don't you just prop the stag's head up on that shelf? Ah, oh, Mia and Brad, I'm so glad you're here. OK, Henry. What? Can you just tell us what happened? You know, 
You know what happened. Well, we know what the school said, but I think your mum just wants to hear it from you. Please. It was lunchtime and we were playing football. Who's we? Me, Frank and a couple of others. All like year sevens. Right. Then this year ten kid, he's massive, came and nicked the ball. So Frank went to get it back. Then this year ten kid starts shoving him. He pushed him right over. And what did you do? Well, that's when I hit him. The massive year ten kid? Yeah. <laughs> Henry, you didn't just hit him, you punched him. Well, nothing else was going to have an effect, was it? You can't go round punching people. I don't, usually. I mean, he's right, Helen. Sorry, what? I mean, Henry's never done anything like this before. <sighs> OK, Lee, that's really not the point right now. Henry, I'm taking your phone. What? I'm taking your phone right now. How long for? A week. Uh, a week? No console, no TV, no screens whatsoever. For a week? Yes. That is way too harsh, isn't it, Lee? I'm with your mum on this one, mate. I think it might not be harsh enough. You cannot hit people. Ever. He deserved it. He's such a bully. It doesn't matter. I still think I did the right thing. I know it feels like that, but it's no way to solve Let me be clear. That kind of violence is never, ever the right thing. You can't keep my phone for a whole week as a punishment for defending my friends. OK, can you just go up to your room for a bit and we'll talk about this later. No. No? I'm not some two-year-old having a meltdown. I know you're not, but I just think we should talk about this later when you've calmed down. I am calm. Henry, I don't want to discuss this anymore. I was just standing up to that year ten. The way you're standing up to Rob. What? I know what's going on. All right. N nothing's going on. Don't lie, Mum. Rob is back and you're all totally freaked out. Henry! Henry, come back! Henry! Hey, leave him for a minute. Oh, God. Just, just don't panic. How does he know? How does he know, Lee? Who told him? Have you said anything? No, of course not, but we've been pretty stressed out. Kids pick up on stuff. We've been so careful. We were, but maybe it was impossible to hide. I should have just talked to him when that man first came back to the UK. But we didn't know how this situation was going to pan out. We still don't. But it does seem like things have calmed down. I suddenly feel terrified. I know. Oh, the streamers look lovely. Yeah, they really do. I think you've got a knack for this, Mia. <laughs> ha! I do. I weren't taking the mic. Jolene's bringing up some cold drinks in a minute. If you want to take a break. Oh, thanks, Jim. Nice T-shirt, by the way. Ah, uh, it's from the Talking Heads song. Yeah, I know. Do you like Talking Heads? Yeah, of course. Really? Why do you look so surprised? Because well, I don't know anyone else our age who does. Have you seen the film? Stop Me Consents? Yeah. No. Ah, it's great. No, I really want to see it. I just haven't had a chance. I'd love to see it again, actually. Well, the streamers look excellent. Oh, thanks. I think it's all coming together rather nicely, don't you? Definitely. Oh, uh, Brad? Yeah? Is it on a streaming platform? Sorry? Oh, so I was just asking Brad if this film's on a streaming platform. Uh, uh, right, uh, Back to work on hanging the pictures. Jasser said that Keir Hardy, Rob Stewart and Robert Burns are all going steadily downhill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll find out how we can watch the Talking Heads film and get back to you. Great. Uh, and you could come to ours, if you, if you want, because I'll have the TV all to myself next week. Oh, how come? Mum and Jasser will be away on honeymoon. Oh. Chelsea's staying with a mate and Bert's going to Susan's. I'm so looking forward to the piece, I can't tell you. <laughs> Henry? What do you want? I need to talk to you. OK. I'm sorry I yelled at you. I didn't mean to. So, you're right, of course. He is back. Rob is back in the country. I'm sorry I didn't tell you before. I was hoping it would turn out to be nothing. And what did it turn out to be? Well, he got in touch via his solicitor to say that he wanted access to your brother, but he's given up on that now. And even if he hadn't, the courts would never have given him access. He's not allowed to see us, Henry. Not you, not Jack, not me. OK? OK. Um, have you got any other questions? Yeah. Is there anything I can do to get my phone back? Henry. What? This is important. So is my phone. Oh, honestly. I know, Mum. I know. OK. But there's nothing I can do, is there? Well, you don't need to do anything because it's all over. And he can't hurt us. 
He really can't, Henry. I promise. Tracy? Oh, hi, Susan. What are you doing at Bridge for? Just come to see Fallon. Oh, right, right. Are you having a last-minute catering panic? No, we're fine. We're good. Oh, right. Well, but you know that I'm happy to help in any way, don't you? Yeah, but there's not a lot left to do. Emma and Fallon have got the food sorted, and Jazza and Jim have finished the room upstairs at the ball. Yes, I did offer to help Jazza yesterday, but he didn't seem to want me. Well, he had Brad and Mia. I think it was plenty of people. I haven't seen it yet, but he says it looks brilliant. It's all Scottish themed. Scottish themed, I know, yes. He's going all out. He's even wearing a kilt. Right, we need to make a list of any last-minute preparations. I think we'll help you. Uh, well, let's think about it for a moment. I don't want anything to slip through the net, so to speak. No, your speech coming along. Ah, well, that's all done and dusted. Really? I was finding it hard going, but I recently turned a corner. Great. You see, I've discovered some rather startling information about you, Jazza McCreary. What sort of information? Ah, I can't give the game away till the big day, I'm afraid. I don't like the sound yet. Jazza. And I don't like surprises. It's very funny. It's the highlight of my speech. Aye, and I want to know what it is. Are you sure? Aye. You're not actually a Scot. Sorry? You're not actually Scottish. You're English. She's got it all sorted. Nothing needs doing. Well, that's good, isn't it? Well, you know me, Helen. I do like to get involved, but there's nothing to get involved in. So maybe you can just relax and enjoy the day? Well, I will do, of course. This new packaging's rather good, I think. Yeah, much better than the other one. But I'm still worried about George and Brad. Are they still not speaking? No. And I've literally begged George to go and talk to Brad. Because Brad's coming to stay with us when Tracy and Jazzy go on honeymoon. Right, well, that does make things a bit trickier. And then last night, Neil went and started decorating one of the bedrooms. <laughs> I said to him, what are you doing? Where's Brad going to sleep now? And do you know what Neil said? Uh, no. Oh, I didn't think about it. I mean, honestly, men, what can you do with them? <laughs> hopeless, absolutely hopeless. So, Brad and George are going to have to share, because we've got my dad coming to stay and all. Oh, dear. Oh, I don't know. Imagine if it gets so bad they actually come to blows. Do you really think that's likely? Well, I just don't know. Right, if we could finish the ball such a blue, I'd love to get the sterling gold next. Oh, right -o. Henry got into a fight at school. Did he? He says he was defending his friend. Oh, dear. Sometimes I feel quite terrified of the responsibility of raising boys. Terrified? Why? Well, I imagine, maybe I'm wrong, but I imagine that girls are more likely to tell you how they're feeling and what's going on. Oh, well, not necessarily. Well, I thought Henry was fine. I thought he was thriving. I'm sure he is thriving, Helen. He's been through such a lot, Susan. Oh, I know. What if all of it's had a much bigger impact than I realised? What if this is just the beginning of... Or well, the beginning of what? A really troubled life. I'm sure it's not. I'm so afraid I haven't looked after him well enough. OK. I think we should take a break. Make a cup of tea and sit in the sunshine for five minutes. What do you think? I don't understand. I don't get it. It's very simple, Jazza. But how did I not know this already? Your mother and father were in England. But why? Why were they in England? Well, people do travel from Scotland to England, Jazza. I know, I know, I know, but... And they were travelling back, and you ended up being born in a bed and breakfast in Northumberland. But my birth certificate says Kelso, the cottage hospital, Kelso. Yes, that's right. But you weren't actually born in the hospital. How do you know all this? I rang your mother. You, you rang my mother? Yeah, she was very helpful. That's no like her. I thought it would amuse you. And I, why did you think that? Well, uh, 
I'm not quite sure now. The entire foundations of my existence have been pulled for under me. Well, surely it's not as bad as all that. You have any idea, honestly. The whole Scottish thing feels like a sham now. Why? You're going to have to go back to the bull. Start again. With the decorating? Aye. Jasser, I really think you're overreacting. It's easy for you to say. Well, of course, you're Scottish, really. Of course you are. But, but I'm no, Emma. It, it was a joke. Something funny for the best man's speech. Do you think we can ask Fallon to change the menu? Change the menu? Well, it's all Scottish food, isn't it? We'll have to change it to roast beef and Yorkshire pudding or something. You're not serious. This was a good idea, to take a break. Mm. Yes, I think it was, if I say so myself. <laughs> Susan? Yeah? Did, did you ever... Did you ever find yourself thinking about the time you spent in prison? Oh, well... Well, yes, I suppose I do, now and again. It's just we've never really talked about it, have we? You and me? No. We haven't. Do you mind? Do you mind me talking about it now? I mean, no. Okay, of course not. I dreamed last night I was back there. Oh, yes. I've had that dream, I must say, a few times. It was horrible. The relief when you wake up. Oh, I know. The worst thing for me about being in prison was the anxiety. This sort of constant terror, really, that... Something terrible had happened and that no-one was telling me. Like my sister had died and no-one was saying. Or, or, or Neil had found out that he'd got cancer or something, but he wasn't telling me. So when I'd ring up and speak to him or the kids... Oh, those phone calls. Oh, I know, they kill you. Yeah. But I'd be almost convinced that they were all pretending like everything was OK when it wasn't. Do you know what I mean? I do. I do, I know exactly. <laughs> I don't know why we should feel like that, though. Hmm. I think it's the isolation. You're so cut off, you start imagining the worst. Yeah. I suppose that's it. I do worry about the impact of that whole time on Henry. I mean, at least Jack was with me. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm worried about my kids, too. I remember Emma talking to me once about what it was like for her. Really? Oh, well, she was only little as well. Not much older than Henry would have been. What did she say? Well, she was reassuring, really. Oh. She said it was upsetting and confusing, but Neil was there and he was great. And she knew that you loved her to bits oh. and that it hasn't affected your relationship. She says you're really close. Oh, that's nice to hear. Because you never really know, do you? What your kids actually think of you. No, you don't. That's the thing, Susan. I've got no idea what Henry thinks of me. And I'm afraid to find out. Where is he? Oh, Tracy, come in, come in. I'm so glad that you're here. Where is he? He's just in the living room. I'll stay in the kitchen, give you some space. I'm going to kill him, honestly. Tracy. What the hell, Jazzer? What's wrong? Jim says you want to call the wedding off. What? I just got a message. What's going on? Is this a wind-up? Is this real? How can you do this to me? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me, Jazzer, because that is so cowardly. And you might be a fool, but you've never been a coward. I'm no lying. I swear on my stupid English life, I'm no lying. Your stupid English life? I don't want to call the wedding off, all right? You don't? No, of course no. I'm crazy about you. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, and I'd, I'd die for you in a heartbeat, OK? Uh, OK. So, why did Jim message me and say you were having a crisis? Oh, Jim, where, where is he? He's in the kitchen, giving us some space. I'll give him some space, honest to God. Oh, Jim! Jim, come in a sec. I think my best man's trying to ruin my life. Why would he do that? I don't know. Insanity's the only possible explanation. Uh, is it all sorted out? No, it is not. Oh. Oh, I thought Tracy was going to talk some sense into you. And who's going to talk some sense into you, Jim? Well, 
I'm sorry, Jazzer, I really am. I, I realise now what a terrible idea it was, but you see, I thought you'd see the funny side. The funny side of Jazzer calling the wedding off? What? No. That's what you said. That's what you said in your text message. No, 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 that's not what I said at all. So, what did your message actually say, Jim? Uh, well, something about you were having a crisis and that... Uh, you wanted to cancel the whole Scottish business and that Tracy'd better come over. Ha, huh, yeah, except you missed out the word Scottish. What? This message says that Jazzer is having a crisis and he wants to cancel the whole business. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, honestly, Jim. Oh, good Lord. So, can I stop having a heart attack now? Oh, Tracy, darling. Poor darling. I'm so, so sorry, Tracy. It's OK. I just thought my world was falling apart and my heart was breaking, etc, etc. I knew you should never have made me best man, Jazz. Oh, don't be daft, Jim. So, hang on, sorry. What is this crisis actually about? Jim's discovered that I'm no, in fact, a Scotsman. What? I found out that Jazza was born south of the border. In a bed and breakfast? In Northumberland. Which means that I'm, to my absolute devastation, an Englishman. It was just a little part of my speech. It was meant to be funny, but Jazzer's taken it very much to heart. I feel like I've been stripped of my identity. Jazzer. I did. I feel like a fraud, a sham. What are you on about? You're more Scottish than blooming bagpipes. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's completely ruined. Not the wedding? No, no, of course not the wedding, but the whole Scottish seems definitely ruined. We're going to have to fix it ASAP. Jazzer, we can't fix it. We can't. It's already fixed. I mean, you're stuck with it. Everyone's put in so much work. Fallon's gone all out. And the room upstairs at the bull looks like Brigadoon. Come on, Jazzer. What? It's all good. Mm. Uh, do you think perhaps we should have a drink? It's a bit early, is it? No. I could do with it, to be honest, Jim. Uh, I was thinking a small scotch might be in order. Ah. Sounds good to me. You know me, Jim. No one to turn down a drink. <laughs> you see, I'd like to propose a toast. Oh, yeah? To Jazza McCreary. More Scottish than bagpipes. What is he doing? I don't know. Can you give him a shout? Yeah, sure. I'm going to be late. Henry, your mum says can you hurry up? Thanks. You OK? Yeah, yeah, fine. I'm hoping we can have a bit of a chat in the car about stuff. Yeah, good idea. Just thought it might be easier to talk if we're not staring at each other. How was your day? Right. Yeah, that was fine. What? No, it was fine. Just a couple of people at work being a bit weird about why I was off. It's none of their business. I know. It's OK. Most people have been lovely. Oh, here we go. <sighs> about time too. Oh, Henry... I couldn't find one of my shin pads. Well, you need to keep them in one place, not just chuck them around the bathroom. I don't just chuck them around the bathroom. OK, I'll see you later, you two. I'll see you later. I'm a bit concerned about my wedding present to Jazza and Tracy. And what is the nature of your concern? Well, that it's boring. Well, what is it? A set of pans. Kitchen pans? Well, yes, obviously. Ah. Oh. That is boring, actually. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, you know me, Jim. Honest as the day is long. Uh, they're very nice and shiny. The pans, not Tracy and Jazza. Obviously. And they weren't cheap, either. Well, why don't you take them back and get them something else? Something that doesn't cost so much. Oh, I don't begrudge them the money, Susan. I'm not suggesting you do. I never really liked salad cream, you know. What's that got to do with anything? Well, nothing really. I, I was just thinking as I restocked. Well, you never know, Jim. You might change your mind one day. Like you changed your mind about the EV charging station. Susan, honestly. We were in it together, me and you, Jim. And now you've jumped ship. But the whole village wants it to happen. <laughs> well, not the whole village. But the majority of people do, and I just can't stand in the way of democracy. I can't do it. And even you must see that it has its advantages. Mm. Do you want to do the ketchup next? Oh, certainly. <sighs> How 
How's the wedding preparations coming along? Uh, I must admit, we could have done with your help decorating the room upstairs at the bull the other day. Jazza was barely able to do anything with his leg in plaster. Mm. But I offered and he said it was all under control. Well, I don't know why he said no. There was only me for half the afternoon till Brad and Mia turned up. And then once we'd got it all done, the next day he wanted to take it all down again. Luckily, we persuaded him that this wasn't necessary. Why did he want to take it all down? Oh, well, th that was actually my fault. How was school? Yeah, fine. Anything interesting happen? I didn't get into a fight, if that's what you mean. Uh, no, that's not what I meant, and I think you know that. Can we listen to some music? In a bit. <sighs> we'll be there in a minute. Henry. What? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just a, a bit worried about you. Well, don't be. It doesn't really work like that, does it? I don't know how it works. Okay, okay, put some music on if you want. Why did he change his mind? Sorry? Why did Rob change his mind about wanting to see Jack? Uh, I don't know, he just did. Maybe his solicitor made him see it was impossible. What if he changes his mind back again? Well, then the court response will be the same. They'll say no. But what if he just tried to take him? Darling. What if he did? He's done it before. Look, we're ready now. We're prepared. Everyone knows who he is and where he is, and we have a, a hundred advantages that we didn't have seven years ago. Right. You mustn't worry about that. He's not going to take any kind of risk, OK? OK. Have you and Jack talked about this? Which bit? Any of it. Well, he knows his dad is back in the country. Oh, how does he know? We heard you. We both heard you and Lee. When? A couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks? Yeah. You didn't say anything? No. What did you hear? Not loads. Nothing really bad. Just that he was back and there was a letter. And then I took Jack into the garden to play football because I knew you wouldn't want him to hear what you were saying. Why didn't you tell me? Because you were already stressed out enough. But I told Jack it'd be all right. And I told him we'd protect him. Oh, Henry. It's all right, Mum. It's not. I mean, it is. But I'm... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What are you sorry for? Just for everything you've been through. It's not your fault. It's his fault. Look, I'll talk to Jack. I'll talk to him as soon as I get home. Yeah, OK. I need to get going. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Go play football. And will there be anything else, Mr McCreary? Uh, no, just a tea bag, thanks. That's £1.75. Why am I Mr McCreary all of a sudden? You tell me. I can't, Susan. The workings of your mind are a mystery to me. Huh. Well, I could say the same to you. What have I done now? What's all this about you having an identity crisis? Oh, I told you about that. Jim, of course. I wish I didn't tell you about it. Well, it just came up. Well, I wish I hadn't. I? Jim, honestly, he's on fire at the moment. I can't believe for one moment you thought you weren't actually Scottish. Scots? I'm Scots. Of course you are. No, I mean, we don't say Scottish. It's for things, no people. Oh, Scots, Scottish, what's the difference? There's a difference. Huh you say so. There is. But you'd better not be having second thoughts about this wedding, Jazzy. Of course I'm no. I'd never forgive you. What are you on about? I'm very protective of our Tracy. I know that. I just didn't like the sound of what Jim was saying. I was worried it was some sort of excuse to disguise your wavering feelings. Well, I don't have any wavering feelings, OK? Mm, OK. OK. I'll see you at the wedding soon. Oh, Jazzy. Aye. For what it's worth, I do actually think you're the right man. Oh, you've got a funny way of showing it sometimes. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. I, it really is just a, a big sister thing. OK. Growing up in our house, well, it wasn't always the most stable environment for kids. I know. So I tried to be the one to provide some security for Tracy. I know that and all. 
<laughs> when she was little, she wouldn't go to sleep till I'd sung to her. Did you know that? No. Every night she'd make me sing the same song. What was the song? Oh, Scarborough Fair. <laughs> I love that, you. Oh, do you know it? Yeah, of course, everybody knows it. She said it made her feel safe. <sighs> She'll be safe with me, Susan. I, I promise. I know. Oh, I know she will. I, I just get jumpy sometimes. Forgive me. Go on, then. Thank you. It was quite a good conversation, I think, with Henry. Oh, good. I just wish I'd done it earlier, though. Well, it's hard, isn't it? No one's the right time. Mm. There's no handbook for this, is there? I mean, this situation is not normal. No, it's true. What about Jack? Yeah, I think it went OK with Jack. I explained things as simply as I could. Didn't get into too much detail. I didn't really talk about the past, just what's happening right now. OK. It's just so hard to know how much information to give. How did you leave it? Well, <laughs> he listened. And then he asked if he could have some time on the console, even though it's midweek, and of course I said yes. <laughs> Can he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well done. Thank you, Lee. What for? Just for being great. I can't sleep. Me neither. Do you think maybe we should have spent tonight apart? What? Why? Because of the bad luck element. No. I didn't think it mattered, but now I'm feeling like, well, why did we take the risk? <sighs> sort of superstition, Tracy. Mm. Nonsense. Yeah. No, yeah, I know, but still. Come on. What? We're going to have a brilliant day tomorrow with all our mates. Yeah. We just need to get some sleep so we don't look completely knackered nor the voice. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. <sighs> Sorry, hang on. Just one thing, right? Aye. You know, things are really good between us right now. <laughs> I'd hope they are. No, no, I mean they are. They're fantastic. <laughs> but it's really hard work being married. Not that me and Dan were married, but you know what I mean. Yeah, that's because you only married or no married to the right guy. True. So? But even in a good relationship, in a brilliant relationship... <laughs> Being nice to each other all the time is basically impossible. Mm. And I just want us to promise that we won't give up on each other if things get tough. Because life is hard, isn't it? And things happen. And I just want us to promise each other that we'll really fight for this to work out. Of course we will. OK. But that's what the morrow's are about, isn't it? The whole day's a promise. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a promise in front of everyone else. And I just want us to make a promise right now, right here, to each other. <sighs> OK. Tracy Horribin, I promise I won't give up on us at the first hard do or the last hard do. OK? OK, Jasmine McGreary. <laughs> I promise too. Now go to sleep, woman. <laughs> I don't know if I can. How about I sing you a lullaby? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. OK. OK. Shut your eyes. <laughs> OK. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Oh, I love this one. Remember me to one who lives there She was once a true love of mine Do you know all the words? <laughs> I do, I. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Please carry on. OK. Mm -hmm. Tell her to make a cambric can I come in, Jazzer? I'm just brushing my teeth. 
didn't want you to see me till I was ready, but I can't find my earrings. Tracy! What? You look gorgeous. <laughs> well, don't sound surprised. I, I'm no surprised. I'm no. I'm, I'm amazed at my own unbelievable luck that I get to marry you. Oh, Jasser. Can have a kiss. Definitely. <laughs> Green velvet. I must say, that's a wonderful suit you're wearing, Brad. Oh, thanks. Did you sort out another wedding present in the end, Jim? No, no, I just didn't have time. Well, have you seen the state of the pans in this kitchen? Uh, I didn't really notice. They all want chucking out, in my opinion. To be honest, right now I'm more concerned about our schedule. Yeah. Oh, you know Tracy and Jasper. They like to cut it fine. Even to their own wedding? They'd be late to their own funeral, Jim, so why not their own wedding? Uh, Brad? Yeah? Perhaps you could remind them that the clock is ticking. I mean, I just did. But Chelsea was still doing Mum's hair. Well, what about Jazza? Uh, he was trying to decide between his suit and his kilt. No. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, well, I do feel terrible about Jazza's identity crisis. Oh, don't be tough, Jim. You take too much on yourself. You really do. Well, I was the one who informed him he was born south of the border, Susan. He's fine. He's absolutely fine, Jim. Don't worry about it. I'll be rather glad when today is over, you know. I don't mean that badly. I just want it all to go without a hitch. Well, it's not going to go at all at this rate, is it? <laughs> well, that was it. <laughs> not what we were planning. No, but it was it. <laughs> oh, it was. Well, OK, but we better go. Oh, suck at my hair. What's Chelsea going to say? She just got it perfect. She won't notice. Of course she will. She's got the eyes of an eagle, that girl. The door's locked. I know. I locked it. I know, but I can't open it. It's jammed or something. Are you winding me up? You try. Oh, no. No, no, no. I can't believe you ate all the croissants this morning. What are you going on about? There's going to be more food than you can eat at this wedding. Well, that's not the point, George. The point is that you're really selfish. You don't think about anyone else. Well, don't worry. I'm going to be back at my nan and granddad's tomorrow. Good. Yeah, it's great there. I get spoiled rotten. Oh. Except I've got to share my room with Brad for the next ten days. Because Tracy and Jazza will be away. No, Brad's going to stay on his own at his house. No, he's not. Oh, poor Brad, then. What about me? It's my room. So I'm actually doing Brad a favour. Not that he deserves it. <laughs> Sorry. Hang on a minute. What exactly is Brad supposed to have done to wrong you? Wrong me? Yes, wrong you. Y you can say that, you know. Yeah, about 200 years ago you could. <sighs> you told him to <laughs> lie to the police and he did and then you dropped him in it. Oh, it's like that, is it? What are you talking about? You still fancy him. Uh, no, I don't. I and I never did. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> Men and women can be friends, you know. Yeah, you definitely, definitely still fancy him. <sighs> Tracy, Jazza. Yeah? Hi. Uh, we're nearly there, I think. <sighs> it's just the bottom hinge isn't coming off as easily. Right. Brad's gone to find a different screwdriver. Right. Thanks, Jim. Oh, I can't believe this, Jazza. It'll be all right, it'll be all right. It won't, it really won't. Uh, we'll just explain everything to the registrar. I'm sure they'll be sympathetic. Sympathetic? When we explained that we got locked in the bathroom because we were... You know what? Obviously we won't go into that level of detail. Mum? Uh, yeah? Are you standing back? Then what are you going to do, Brad? Shoot the lock? <laughs> Don't break the door, Brad. I'm not going to. Doors are expensive. Do you want to get out of there or not? <sighs> Just make sure you're standing back, all right? We are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Mia? Just going to leave this tray of Prosecco on the table. Now, can you tell people to help themselves if anyone's looking a bit parched? Oh, yeah, sure. Fallon's going to bring down a few snacks to keep people going. Great. Right. Oh, God, things must be ever so chaotic down at that register office. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Oh, oh, is that me? It's Susan. Oh, what'd she say? 
Oh, they were all done about 20 minutes ago. Oops. Well, they'll be here any minute then. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> When Jazza first asked me to take on the role of best man, I said no. <laughs> I feared that the job was beyond my capabilities. Never! <laughs> Luckily, Jazza had the bright idea that I should share the role with Ed. So, my thanks to you, Ed, for your gracious part in this wonderful day. Yes. And it has been a wonderful day. It is not over yet. No, by a long way. That's very true. But when I have finished this speech, I shall collapse in a crumpled heap with a cold glass of white wine. <laughs> because this has been one of the most extraordinary weddings I've ever attended. Because Jazza and Tracy are two of the most extraordinary people I have ever met. <laughs> Irrepressible, charming, unpredictable, wild, loyal and lion-hearted humans who suit each other down to the ground. I love them both dearly, as I know we all do, and I wish them all the happiness in the world. To Jazza and Tracy! Oh, that lovely? They're beautiful. Is my mascara running? Only a bit. How much is a bit? Oh, congratulations, Jazza and Tracy. <laughs> hey, thanks, Jolene. Thanks, Jolene. It's pity the register office were running so late. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should put in a complaint about that. I don't think we'll bother, will we? No, no. Yeah, but it went all right in the end, eh? Oh, yeah, it went really well. Yeah, it was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was just how we'd always imagined. Yep. Oh, well, I'm I'm very pleased for both of you. Aye, thanks. And thanks again for the dress, Jolie. Oh, you're so welcome. Didn't she look gorgeous? Yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Your mother was waxing lyrical about it, Jazza. <laughs> I do feel quite good in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Susan's done a lovely job on the alterations. Oh, do tell her that, won't you? Yeah, we'll do. Uh, where is she? Oh, she's here somewhere. Oh, yeah, she's over there oh, with George. Right. Why don't you go and have a word with Brad now? No, no. Mm. Oh, go on, please, George. He's coming to stay with us tomorrow. Does he know that? What do you mean? Well, according to Mia, he thinks he's staying at home on his own. Oh, that can't be right. Oh, it's so hot in that room. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Looks good, though, doesn't it? Yeah. It, was it a nice wedding? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? No, yeah, it was really nice. Why are you being weird? I'm not. Yeah, you're suddenly acting like... I, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's not you, Mia. It, what is it? The, the wedding. It, it didn't happen. What? They were too late for the register office. They missed their slot because they accidentally got locked in the bathroom. <laughs> Me and Jim had to take the door off its hinges to get them out. <laughs> Blimey! <laughs> Mum was so upset, oh. really worried about everyone waiting here, and then Susan came up with this brilliant plan to just pretend like it had all gone out. <laughs> it was a good idea. I know. They'll have to sneak off and get married when they get back from the honeymoon. <laughs> that is sort of hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good story as well. I suppose it is, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, so uh, you want to go back in? To the party? Yeah. yeah not particularly. Huh. Do you? Not especially. <laughs> um, I, sh I should say, you really do look kind of amazing in your suit. Thank you. I'm also boiling. <laughs> yeah, velvet in July. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, didn't really think that one through. No. Y you look really lovely too, by the way. Oh, thanks. Um... Uh, so, uh... <laughs> what? Uh, uh, I don't know how to say this. Um, am I imagining it? Or, or See, I don't want to get this wrong. I mean, I've got this wrong before. So, uh, but is there a bit of a vibe between... Brad! Between? Uh, between who? Sorry, hang on, Mir. What do you want, George? I think we need to talk. Uh, no. 
Uh, I, I think we're better off not talking, actually, and just keep it away from each other. Well, that's not going to be easy, is it? If we're sharing a bedroom. Sorry, what? You're meant to be staying with my nana and granddad next week. Says who? Says my nana. And your mum. Uh, well, I don't think so. Yeah, and my granddad started decorating one of the spare rooms, so you're in with me. Is this a joke? No, but... It is sort of funny. But why didn't my mum tell me? Do you think maybe she did and you weren't listening? Oh, uh, oh I don't know, maybe. Ah, well, Brad, look on the bright side. There is no bright side. I don't want to share a room with you for five minutes, George, let alone ten days. Because I despise you, frankly. You're a useless friend and you're not a nice person. I'm glad you wore your kilt. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't get the suit trousers out of the plaster cast, so... But a suit? I mean, it's nowhere near as good as a kilt, is it? <sighs> Probably no. At least the cast's coming off tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Jim's speech was lovely. When it just... No mention of Scotsgate. <laughs> Aye. He learned his lesson. Oh, poor Jim. He's been fantastic. Everybody has. Yeah. And Susan had that genius idea and know to tell MD. You know what? That was a genius idea. I've seen Brad have been brilliant and Mia's been great and all. Oh, Brad and Mia. Aye. I do hope. Let's see ya. Yeah. Right. I think we should try and dance. How are you going to dance with a broken ankle? Well, I'll just go to find a way. It's, it's for wedding day. <laughs> well, technically it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean. I've just thought. What? You know, last night when I was worried about the bad luck of us not sleeping apart? Aye. And you seeing the dress and everything. Aye. So we're sort of free of that, aren't we? Because <laughs> we didn't actually get married. <laughs> That's true, I suppose. <laughs> so maybe, like, when we do get married on the sly, we could just spend the night apart the night before, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> sure. Whatever you like. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> I love you, Jazza. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> And I'm really looking forward to getting married. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Jazza. Sorry to bother you. I just had to bring this round for you and Tracy. Oh, thanks. In all the kerfuffle yesterday, I forgot to bring you your wedding present. Mm. Uh, shall I just leave it here? Great. Yeah. It's not the most exciting wedding present in the world, I'm afraid. Oh, you didn't have to get us anything, you know. Oh, I most certainly did. Do you want to come in the house? No, no, I'm sure you've got plenty to do. In fact, shouldn't you have left for Scotland by now? <laughs> well, we're a wee bit behind schedule. Uh, business as usual, then. <laughs> aye, aye. I haven't told anyone that you didn't actually get married because you were too late to the register office. <laughs> well, you know we like to do things differently, eh? Ah, you most certainly do. Uh, uh, by the way... Yes? You were a brilliant best man, Jim. Your fears were unfounded. Thank you, Jazza. And your speech. Honestly, you smashed it. Well, that's very nice to hear. You OK, Brad? Yeah, fine. Just tired. Have you packed your things yet? What things? For staying at Susan's. Uh, no, not yet. She said she could do you your tea if you get round there for about half past six. OK. You don't mind too much, do you? Staying over there? Uh, no. No, not at all. Oh, good. Just saves me from worrying about you all on your own, you know? I know. And hopefully you won't have to have too much to do with George. If you don't want to, I mean. It'll be fine with George. OK. Thanks, Brad. You're such a good lad. Honestly. Is that everything? I think so. Should we get cracking, then? Yeah, you get in. Can you manage? Ah, I think so. Give us your crutches and I'll put them in the back. Ta! Brad! You OK, Jazzer? You're going to be all right? Uh, I'll be fine. Brad! You off? Yeah, I think so. Better late than never. That could go on our gravestones, that could. <laughs> yeah. Here lie Jazza and Tracy, dearly departed. Better late than never. <laughs> All right, enough of the dying talk, Mum. Sorry. Have a safe journey and have a lovely holiday. We will do. And thanks for everything, Brad. I haven't done anything. 
Ah, you have. You've let me into the family. Well, you know, it's good to have you with us, Jazza. <laughs> Don't forget to double lock the door when you go and make sure the gas is off and the lights and that. Will do. OK, sweetheart. Oh, keep in touch, won't you? Yeah. Oh, keep in touch with Chelsea and all. Yeah. <sighs> OK. Love you to bits. Love you too, Mum. Oh, hi, Brad. Uh, hi, Mia. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, good, thanks. I'm, um... I, I'm just on my way to the shop. Oh, right. Um, aren't they supposed to have left by now? Yeah, hours ago, but now the car won't start. Oh, no. I think my mum's flooded the engine. <laughs> are they off? I'm not sure. Just came to wave them goodbye. Yeah, I'm not sure they're going anywhere. Who oh, no. Why? Oh, dear. Your poor mum and Jazza. I know. Do you think Jazza can fix it? I don't know. He's pretty handy, but that is the car with nine lives. I mean, eventually you run out of luck, don't well, you? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about cars, really. Well, me neither. <laughs> Do you want a drink? Um, what have you got? Uh, tea, orange squash. I, I think that's about it. There's hardly anything in the house because they're going away. I'd drink some orange squash. Yeah? Yeah, why not? Uh, we haven't got any biscuits or crisps or anything. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Sorry, if I'd known you were coming round. Oh, stop apologising. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I think I'm just nervous. <laughs> what are you nervous about? Uh, nothing. Just being stupid. <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> You're welcome. So, um, so... Are you going to go and stay at Susan's? Uh, yeah, I think so. You didn't want to try and convince your mum you should stay here? Mm, not really. She'll just worry if she knows I'm here on my own. She thinks she told me ages ago. I, I don't know if she did or not. Maybe she did and I weren't listening. <laughs> well, I can come over and see you. Or, or you can come to Grange Farm as much as you want. I mean, if you want to get away from George. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. That sounds nice. Yeah? Definitely. We could watch that Talking Heads film. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. There's a few things I want to watch, actually. Like, stuff no one else in our house wants to see. What kind of thing? I don't know, just, like, European stuff. Kurosawa? <laughs> He's not really European. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know what I mean. Or, or Tarkovsky, then. I'd, I'd watch some Tarkovsky. Deep. Yeah, very deep. <laughs> and no one else in our house is keen. <laughs> you surprise me. <laughs> But, um, don't you want to watch that sort of stuff? I do, actually, yeah. Oh, we, we could have, like, a like a film club. <laughs> Who else would be in the club? Um, uh, no one else that I can think of, actually. Just, just me and you, probably. Sounds good to me. Yeah? I can't believe it. I just can't believe it! Well, we can't sort it. We could get the train. That'll cost us a fortune. And then how will we get around and do all the things we were planning on? We could uh, hire a car. That'll cost a fortune too. Well, we're not going to miss our honeymoon, are we? <sighs> yeah. How's it going? Oh, not well, Jim. Not well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I've just got one more thing to try. What? Well, uh, just a moment, Jasper. I've got another wedding present for you. My hands are all covered in oil, Jim. Uh, you open it, Tracy. It's just a little thing. But you already got us those lovely new saucepans. Well, they were quite boring, oh. and I've been regretting them ever since I bought them. No, no, they're really nice. Can you try the engine again, Tracy? Uh, uh, could you open the present first, Tracy? Uh, sure. Uh, sorry, Jazza. Just, hang on a sec. <laughs> Jim, are these your car keys? They most certainly are. Jazzer? What? I think Jim's going to lend us his car. What? <laughs> That's amazing, Jim. You're amazing. You are. Sure. Can you manage without it for a whole ten days? Oh, it's not for ten days. It's forever. What? I'm giving you the Riley. <laughs> no way. Jim, we can't accept it. But you must. It's too much, honestly. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, please, take it. I insist. 
It's been serviced very recently, so it shouldn't give you any trouble at all. But, Jim, it's your car. I promise you, Tracy, I've been thinking for some time that I ought to get a very different kind of vehicle. This is just the prompt I need. I don't know what to say. Well, you don't need to say anything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can I give you a hug? Oh, well, by all means. Oh. Oh, this is like the nicest thing anyone has ever done for anyone, ever. I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> I'd hug you and hug him, but I'm, my hands are covered now. I'm hugging you in spirit. Shall I bring the Riley round? Be easier to transfer your things that way. Uh, yeah, great. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll go and get cleaned up. Yeah, I don't want oil all over my new car. Eh, uh, he's giving it to both of us. That's what you think. <laughs> Have a great time, Mum. Thanks, all of you. You've been brilliant. Oh, that's more like it. But don't worry about anything. Have a safe journey. See you in a couple of weeks. We love you, Brad. We love you, Jim. And we love you too, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> and they're off. Oh, aren't they going to get there at, like, two in the morning? <laughs> yep. Well, at least they'll get there. Oh, that was such a lovely thing you did, Jim. I'll tell you what, Mia. I've actually been looking into getting an electric vehicle. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, with the charging station being a done deal, it's a good idea. Oh, I hated us not being on the same side, you know, Jim, over all of that. I know, it wasn't very pleasant, was it? But that's all over now, right? Oh, yes. Definitely. It wasn't the charging station itself that I objected to. It was the way that Damara and Cell Charge were rolling it out without due consultation or consideration. I do think we need to keep an eye on them, you know. Oh, so do I, so do I. Well, maybe you two can team up and do that. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Right. I'm going to leave you two young people to your evening. OK, Jim. OK. <laughs> uh, uh, have a nice evening yourself. I plan to collapse in front of the television with another cold glass of white wine. <laughs> it's been a very long week. Oh, uh, enjoy. I will do. I will do. <laughs> well. Well. Are you OK? Me? Yeah. yeah I'm fine, yeah. You OK? Yeah, yeah, fine. Um, uh, so, what are you going to do now? Well, I'm supposed to be getting round to Susan's for my tea. Right. But, but I'm in no rush. I, I haven't even packed my stuff. Oh, right. What about you? You were supposed to be going to the shop, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I was, yeah. But, um, uh, but I'm in no rush either. Shop will close soon. That is true. What did you need to buy? Um, nothing. Nothing. I won't really go into the shop. I, I mean, I was, but it was also sort of an excuse to see if you were, um, about. Oh. Oh, right. Yeah. Is that, is that OK to say that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course it is. Of course it is. OK. Are you hungry? Hungry? Yeah, for food. <laughs> uh, I am a bit, yeah. Well... I could make us something to eat here. But you won't get any food in the house. <laughs> That's true. We could go to the shop, get some stuff, come back here and, like, cook something. That's a good idea. OK. <laughs> but, but you're still vegan, right? Yeah. What can we cook from the shop that's vegan? Not loads of things. OK. Good. Shall we go, then? Uh, yeah, I just need to get my key and some cash. Can, can you wait a sec? Sure. Great. And uh, Brad? <laughs> yeah. I was, um... I was a bit disappointed that George sort of interrupted our conversation. At the wedding, I mean. Yeah, he did sort of get in the way, didn't he? Because I was really hoping that you were... that you were going to kiss me. Oh, right. So, uh, before you go and get your door key... You want a kiss in the middle of the road? <laughs> like where anyone could see us? Not in the middle of the road. <laughs> I mean, we're standing on the drive. That is not what I meant. You know that is not what I meant. Brad. OK. Sorry. I'll just... kiss you then, shall I? Yes, please. That would be really nice. <laughs> <laughs>